the Browns got themselves a dominant win on Sunday afternoon, taking their game 27-3 against the Tennessee Titans. Usually I'm a little bit more timely with uploading uh, post-game videos, but I don't feel too bad about this one because this one was mostly, from a neutral observer standpoint, mostly a snooze fest, much thanks to the Browns defense. As a Browns fan, obviously, I loved watching that game, uh, especially watching the Ohio State-Notre Dame game on Saturday night. A Watching a team that I cheer for coast to a nice easy, vic easy victory was just what the doctor ordered. Defense was ready to go from the kickoff. Offense did take a little bit to get into gear, but they definitely started clicking You know, late in the second quarter, definitely in the second half. This is my third straight week with no complaints about the Browns defense. Jim Schwartz, I'm not, you know, Jim Schwartz does seem like the perfect fit for this defense. And in retrospect, it makes Joe Woods look even worse uh, in hindsight, just because of what, we've, what we're seeing this defense do. Although Joe Woods does not have the defensive line that Jim Schwartz has, but still Joe Woods, definitely you could tell that there were a lot of pieces there with Joe Woods that just he, he did not put them in the right places. Uh, Derek Henry and DeAndre Hopkins mostly kept in check throughout this entire game. Sure, each of them both had some individual plays where they had some decent and positive gains, but again, for the most part, they were pretty much held in check. Miles Garrett had himself a monster game, three and a half sacks, although my favorite play that he had wasn't even one that he registered a stat on, but he was uh, moving back and forth across the defensive line and he had two tight ends motioning with him and that had actually drew a timeout because they were about to get a delay of game with how much the tight ends were motioning back and forth that made me laugh they I think they cut to the sideline where Jim Schwartz was having a chuckle about that as well the defense just seems like it's having a lot of fun playing football and of the two units it's one of the first times actually in my life that I remember I, that I'm so much more excited to see the defense on the field than the offense at this point it, it is a bit it, it's a testament to uh, what this defense has been doing throughout the first few weeks of the season. Hopefully they can continue uh, this elite level of play. Uh, the offense did show that it can move the ball. I think their job is mostly going to be to just not screw up the performance that the defense is putting in. The defense is going to get the job done with flying colors. And the offense, if they can just put a, a decent amount of points up, they should be able to rely mostly on the backs of that defense. Now, there was no Greg Newsom. Didn't really end up mattering. And Ty Inseki was elevated from the practice squad for the injured James Hudson. Now, the Browns' first drive ended in a field goal. The play calling was a little bit different. You could tell they were adjusting to life without Nick Chubb having to script those first plays. You had that double reverse screen pass to Elijah Moore. That did work, but it did, it's not like it worked for a huge play or anything. It was That was definitely the oddest play call of the game, probably. Uh, uh, but they end up getting a field goal on it, 3 nothing early. Defense, again, phenomenal. But Elijah Moore would fumble on the next drive. Titans starting it deep in Cleveland territory. But the de defense was stout enough to force a 44-yard field goal attempt. That was good. Tied at 3, and that would be the score at the end of the first quarter. Second quarter, Browns are moving. Deshaun Watson has this play where he's getting tackled behind the line of scrimmage and just decides to uh, just chuck it behind him to Elijah Moore who is not ready and the backwards pass slash pitch I suppose is not accurate at all could have been a devastating turnover another one after they just fumbled it earlier however the next play on a second and 26 after the Browns put themselves in a huge hole the Titans bailed them out Deshaun Watson getting neck chopped that's called for roughing the passer there was also a defensive pass interference down the field on that same play and then later Watson in the offense making up for their earlier gaffes when he found a wide open Jerome Ford for the touchdown down. Nice double move by Jerome Ford to get himself open. Score becomes 10-3. to Titans front was getting a little bit of pressure. Titans definitely uh, sending blitzes with, um, with the Browns not having Nick Chubb. The Titans probably feeling a bit safer about maybe they, they're, they're fine with letting some screens go by if it means getting some pressure on the pass game. The Browns defense also starting to get a little bit too aggressive. You have defensive pass interference, a couple of offsides penalties, but they do make up for it, creating multiple negative plays to drive Tennessee out of field goal range in their next drive. And on the Browns' ensuing drive, Amari Cooper would catch a ball, has plenty of yards after catch available, might have even gotten a touchdown, but he is ruled out of bounds right after he caught it, even though the replay showed that he is not even close. I'm not sure what the official saw in order to make that ruling. They had Gene Steratore explain it for some reason, and even Gene Steratore was like, yeah, this is just a, a straight-up mistake. Called it like a lapse of judgment, basically saying, yeah, the, the ref ha majorly screwed this call up. And the next play, Amari Cooper gets held with no flag. Uh, so Amari Cooper, you could definitely tell he was very frustrated after those couple of plays. They do get points out of it, but they have to settle for a 52-yard field goal 
13 to 3. Good for Dustin Hopkins becoming a reliable way to get points if the Browns need a field goal. Tannehill late in the first half just spamming passes to DeAndre Hopkins. One of them ends up working. I saw Martin uh, Martin Emerson getting that matchup a lot. Chris Moore had an amazing catch for the Titans to get the Titans down to the Browns 11 yard line. However, Titans with no timeouts decide to go back for a pass and Miles Garrett gets a sack on third down. The clock runs out. The first half ends 13 to 3 and for me that's when I kind of felt pretty okay with thinking that the Browns were going to get out of this one scot free because if the Titans score there, they build some momentum heading into halftime before getting the ball back, maybe that creates a little bit of panic, but with that play and ensuring that the Titans don't even make it a one score game with a field goal, that definitely helped calm the nerves a bit. Now, the, again, like I mentioned, the Titans get the, did get the ball first in the second half. Didn't matter. Defense was great. And then the Browns on offense, they took the ball right down the field. Jerome Ford gets a rushing touchdown. The score is 20-3, to and the game is basically wide open at this point. Browns' defensive line is swarming Tennessee for and pretty much the rest of the game. Amari Cooper getting his touchdown back late in the game. He got wide open as well behind the Tennessee defense, and that's what made the final score 27-3. to Again, I'm not really going through most of the sequences in the second half because I think those are irrelevant. The second half, once it was 20-3, to especially after that, uh, the, the first drives for both teams in the second half where the Titans were stopped and the Browns drove down the field, got a touchdown. The game was pretty much over by that point. The rest of the game, essentially a formality. So th this is a dominant victory over an inferior opponent to be sure like the Browns were playing the Browns were probably already working with a better roster than the Titans and, and the Browns were just playing like they were on another planet that that the Titans were not even close to inhabiting so a, a nice dominant win for the Browns they're not going to be playing the Tennessee Titans every week but when you have teams like this on your schedule you're supposed to dominate them you're supposed to uh you know especially with the defense that you have shut them down and that's what we saw. That's very encouraging moving forward. The Browns do have a... They're, they're going to have a tough challenge against Baltimore next week. The divisional matchups, usually... They're usually a tough task. I know Cincinnati, uh, that, that game was pretty... Was weird, and the Browns ended up dominating that one. But we'll see how the Browns defense will, able, will be able to handle Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore offense. And we'll see if the Browns offense can continue to have a, a semi-solid game. They, they, they showed that they can... Get, get some consistent movement in the second half against Tennessee. We'll see if that carries over to Baltimore next week. But that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did make it this far into it, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. and like to see more like it. Let me know what you thought about this game down in the comments below. And I will see you at the next one.